Chapter 101, Nanohana They had to travel for more than a couple of days before they could see the first land again. By this time, Vivi and Agaram were sure that this was Alabasta because the weather had been hot and Robin had already checked again with the permanent pointer. While crossing they had also passed over the underwater volcanoes and this was a whole new experience for everyone. Even for Ken. In his previous life, he had only heard of those and watched them a couple of times in videos. But here, the water wasn't deep, so everyone had to smell in sulfur for quite a few seconds before coming out. In the original story, it was here that they would have come across bond clay and would make a bond that would transcend enmity. But of course, there was no such case here. Bond clay had been taken care of from the beginning itself, and they would just have to reach Alabasta. After an hour more on the sea, they anchored near the port of Nanohana. In order to make sure that the Baroque works didn't come after their ship, they had to anchor the ship quite far away from the port. Oye Luffy, what should we do with her? Zoro asked while pointing at Robin. The inclusion of Vivi and Igaram was fine because Luffy was already on a roll to beat the shit out of Crocodile so their aims coincided with Vivi and Igaram. But Robin was different. She was from the enemy's side. Though she had been helpful until this time, it couldn't be denied that she belonged to the enemy camp, and now that they were in enemy territory, they would have to keep an eye on everything. She was someone whose devil fruit was unique and could easily be used to pass on information. Luffy looked at Robin for a minute and said, T don't care, she can leave or stay. Luffy didn't really care. Somehow, he could tell that Robin didn't actually have any ill intentions for them. Robin's jaw dropped. When she got on the ship, she had already thought of running away after coming to Alabasta. Sure, a part of her liked being with the crew. She could tell that this crew was unique and had quite a bit of power. But she couldn't give anyone her full trust. Years of struggle and betrayal had made her realize that. Maybe only her dead mother... Clover and her colleagues from O'Hara and Jaguar de Saul deserved her full trust. She wasn't sure if anyone could ever win her trust again. Then when she heard the words of Luffy, it really came as a surprise. Even after being the enemy of theirs, she had been treated fair and now she was let go for free without asking anything in return. Igaram felt uncomfortable when Luffy said that, but didn't call him out. Vivi could vaguely understand why Luffy didn't care. It was because they had already taken her down so easily and he had utmost trust that he would be able to take down Crocodile. So if the main head would be taken down, why would he care for someone in lower ranks? Robin thought for a second and just shook her head. T will join you. Crocodile is at the rain base right now. We would have to travel quite a lot. But after getting to the rain base, I will leave. I wouldn't join you in the fight and nor will I come after you. Ken just smiled listening to Robin. The first step to joining the crew had been taken. She would soon officially join the crew. None of the crew members said anything more, as their captain had already decided. There was no point in arguing. Everyone got out of the ship and looked straight for the town. Of course, Luffy wanted to run, but Ken came and stopped him. Baka, if you run away, I will never be able to find you. We have someone to meet here. Someone? Who? Ken hadn't given the information that Ace was supposed to wait for them here, so it was still a mystery for him. But since they would have to go for rations and proper clothes, the group got separated. Zoro, Chopper and Robin were one group with special instructions to not let Zoro out of sight, or he might just get lost and end up in Dragon Ball. Sanji and the two women would form another group responsible for clothes and food. Zoro's Guar, Aup, was responsible for the miscellaneous things required for the crew, like medicine, some nails, and other required items to repair the ship. Going Mary had been suffering for a bit, and so they would need to repair. Usopp, Ken, and Luffy would form the other group. Igaram had decided to go to Alubarna, the capital of Alabasta, to meet the king himself and give him an update. Vivi felt a little sad knowing that Igaram was going to leave, but she didn't stop him. It was better that way, instead of sending Keru on a long and lonely journey alone. Luffy and Usopp were hungry, and both of them were already following their sense of smell to reach a restaurant. Ken just followed them for a bit. His observation hockey had already made him know 
that there were not one but two acquaintances in the restaurant that they were approaching. One was Ace himself. Ace had hockey, so he was able to easily deflect Ken's observation hockey. But he was sure that it was Ace, because along with Ace, there was another person who was known to Ken and Luffy too. Smoker. Destiny had brought him here again. The trio soon reached the restaurant, and when they entered inside, they noticed a complete silence among the customers. It was because the customers were a little scared of what was going to happen. Two people were in a confrontation right now. One was the second division commander of the Whitebeard Pirates, and the other was a marine captain. Read 33 more chapters ahead on my patreon.com slash the lightage host. Chapter 1 or 2. Ace Luffy and Usopp were both loud and noisy when they walked in. Their noise broke the silent tension among the two when the trio walked. Luffy first noticed Smoker. At first he didn't recognize Smoker, but after a few seconds of looking at his face, everything came back to him. The guy who was after him in Logetown and on whom his punches didn't have any effect. Yeah, you are that Smokey. Another loud voice came from the side. It was then Luffy saw Ace. His eyes sparkled into stars when he saw Ace. Ken had already noticed Ace and just smiled at him. Ace looked quite different from when he last saw. He now had complete white eyes and his hair had grown quite a lot, just like Neji. Ace, you are here. Luffy shouted and ran to Ace to give him a hug. Smoker was left standing with none of the brothers paying any attention to him. Ken too followed Luffy and came up to Ace to give him a hug. But after the hug, a strange situation occurred. Without any warning, Ken clenched his fist and punched Ace right at his face. The restaurant, which had sturdy walls, couldn't stop Ace from stopping as he flew away, destroying consecutive walls. It was just like when Luffy flew in and had hit both Smoker and Ace, sending them flying. Only in this case, Ken had sent Ace flying. The eyes of the people had gone wide seeing this. At first they thought that there would be a fight. Then two random people came in and gave the captain of the second division a hug, and then he proceeded to punch him in the most brutal way possible. What the hell was going on? Even Usopp was confused by what Ken did just now, and Luffy too had a puzzled look. Ken didn't bother answering him and looked at Smoker. You have quite the guts for coming after us with what we did to you. Ken said as he brought out the weapon of Smoker himself. This weapon was taken from him and it was a humiliation for him. Smoker looked at Ken with sharp eyes and said, Punisher Kenny, only you have the power to stop me, but what about your crew members? I knew that you and Straw Hat Luffy would come here and I have already sent marines in disguise all over the town. You have nowhere to run. Smoker seemed a little proud of himself with that. He had known that he might not be a match against Ken, or maybe even Luffy, who seemed to have many tricks up his sleeve. But this didn't mean that everyone in the crew would know how to fight. Oye, oh, yeah, Ken, I thought you took care of this, Smokey? To thought, too. Seems like I underestimated him. Ken replied, not bothering with the threat to his crew. They were powerful on their own, and they would be just fine. Smoker couldn't take this nonchalance of these pirates anymore and flew to deliver a punch to Luffy. But as he was inches away from Luffy, Ken slammed him with his own weapon in the ground. He hit Smoker right on his neck with the edge of the weapon and pinned him with a huge force. Smoker almost cried out in pain and spat at the spot. It was good that he was alone and Tashigi was somewhere else, or else they would have seen their ferocious captain lying down like a dead fish, Smoker got beaten. Again. Meanwhile, Ace, who had just been blasted away by Ken, came after getting up. He wasn't badly hurt or something. Ken didn't use hockey in this attack, and Ace wasn't using his observation hockey either. Unlike the original story, he was much more proficient in his hockey, but he didn't expect to get hit by Ken. After coming back to the restaurant, he looked at Ken with some anger in his eyes. Like others, he too didn't care how easily Smoker was pinned on the ground. The people around had already left in fear. They had heard Smoker call him Punisher Kenny and Straw Hat Luffy, so they could already guess who these people were. One was the second division commander, and now two supernovas had arrived. It was better to run for their lives. Only the restaurant manager was hiding behind the counter. He couldn't just leave his restaurant. This was his life. What is the big deal, Ken? Why did you hit me? 
It's because Whitebeard war isn't man enough to beat the shit out of you when he had the chance. What? Who is Whitebeard? Luffy. Better question who the fuck is he? Usopp said while pointing at Ace. Ah, this is Ace, our brother. We were brought up together. Nani? Another monster. Usopp was taken aback. Smoker, who was listening, was also surprised. There had never been a specific mention of the brothers before, and this was the first time he had seen another brother pop up. Ask him who is Whitebeard. Ken said as he answered Luffy. Ace had really followed his original story and joined Whitebeard, and now he was searching for Marshal D. Teach. Before Ace could use more expletives on Ken, there was a huge noise outside. Some of the people who ran had gone to the Marines and narrated the whole scene to them, and thus many Marines had come running by to save the old captain. Listening to the noise of the Marines, Ken let go of his hold on Smoker. Ken might mock Smoker, but he wasn't cruel enough to let Smoker be seen by his own subordinates in such an embarrassing situation. He was one of the few Navy that was good in the whole of Marine, and he didn't want to change that. Smoker was surprised by this. Meanwhile, Ken caught Ace and Luffy by their collar and took off. Usopp was spacing for a second and shouted when he saw everyone had left him. He also made a run a second later, cursing at Ken Reed. 32 more chapters on my patreon.com slash the light ed coast. Chapter 103 Ace, Kenny. You better not run. Smoker who just got released from the hands of Ken stormed after the straw hats. He felt humiliated. Not because he couldn't catch him, but he felt Kenny was purposefully making fun of him by letting him go. This hurt his ego. Ken didn't even bother to look back at Smoker, who was running after him. He had already had his two brothers on his shoulders, and was running at super-fast speed possible for him with the help of body flicker jutsu, and also jumping in distant strides. Usopp was also running, but he was using Sonido from time to time to get away. In almost a couple of minutes, the infamous group vanished from the sights of Smoker. Punisher, White Eye Ace, and Straw Hat Luffy are brothers. Send this information to the headquarters. Smoker said as he returned to the Marines who had been running after Smoker. What? One previous supernova and the current supernovas are brothers? This is bad. Are the Straw Hats going to join the Whitebeard Pirates? Heff they do the whole demography of the New World might change. This discussion was rampant among the Marines as they got to know such a terrifying secret. They were praying that these monsters wouldn't join the Whitebeard. They were already so dangerous, especially White Eye Ace. It was said that White Eye Ace could see your weak points with his white eyes and knew perfect ways to go after those points. Attacking those weak points would make the body immovable. And along with that weird power, came his power of devil fruit. The Mara Mara no Mi, a devil fruit that was at the same level as the admirals. Though having a powerful Logia fruit wasn't necessary to become an admiral, it couldn't be denied that this gave the current admirals an edge over their enemies. Meanwhile, Ken and others had finally reached a secluded position away from the eyes of everyone. Ken, how dare you hit me and then run from those cowardly marines? We are not here to cause a ruckus. We have already attracted too much attention. You are the one who caused an uproar on arrival. Why did you hit me? Ace was still angry and wanted to know why he received such kind of greetings. Don't you know why you received such greetings? You went against the command of your own captain, haven't you? Ken asked. Would someone tell me what is going on? Luffy got frustrated and shouted. He felt left out from the conversation, while Usopp was trying to figure out what kind of monster this person was. Luffy, I joined the Whitebeard Pirates. What are Whitebeard Pirates? Whitebeard is a great man and I consider him as my father. He asked me to join his group so I joined. Do you want to come in? Eh, you joined another pirate. That's unique of you, Ace, but no thank you. I will be the Pirate King, of course. I wouldn't join another pirate. Ha ha ha. I expected that from you. Ken? You knew about this? Luffy asked as he didn't know that Ace had joined the Whitebeard Pirates. He didn't, but that tattoo on his back was enough for me to know. I didn't hit you because you joined the Whitebeard Pirates. I hit you because you are after Teach. Ace got silent when Ken spoke. Whitebeard did say not to go after Teach, as he felt that it wasn't worth it, but Ace was quite close to Thatch, and he just couldn't let this go. 
and for that reason he had been after Teach for some time to take revenge in the name of Whitebeard. He went against the orders of his captain, and now he was in the open sea. How do you know about Teach? You went to Drum. You think I am dumb as to not understand why you were in Drum Island, or do you think I am as ignorant as this idiot? Don't praise me so much. I am blushing, Luffy. He isn't praising you. A who? Usopp. He killed a friend of mine. I just can't let him get away. Of course. But do you even know why he killed Commander just for a devil fruit? Do you think I care? Ace was incensed now, as the memories of his friend were coming back to him. Ace still had that anger in him way, which could never be doused until he had done what he had set out to do. Of course you don't, because you are an idiot. Ace's anger came out in the form of flames burning over his back. He was angry because Ken had attacked his sore spot. Ken would always go after him when he seemed to be angry. This was the only thing Ace didn't like about Ken. Wow. Ace, you ate a devil fruit? Luffy could easily tell that Ace had eaten some kind of devil fruit. Hi, Mara Mara no me. Logia type. Usopp and Luffy were surprised, only Ken gave him a deadpan look. Ken wasn't surprised by his devil fruit, but he was still angry at Ace for leaving the crew. After coming to this world, he was trying to avoid the Marineford War, but this idiot was still after him. What do you know about Teach? Ace asked, as he was curious of what his brother knew. His brother had always been an all-knowing guy, so he wanted to see what Ken had known. The devil fruit which he ate is Yami Yami no Mi, a Logia-type fruit which is unique. How do you know this? Didn't you ask the villagers in Drum Kingdom about how he attacked? For God's sake, Ace, you are a ninja and you went after an enemy without knowing anything at all? Uh, Nani, he is a ninja too? Usopp. Yeah, we brothers became ninjas long ago. Those eyes of his are called Byakugan, which can see through the chakra points of one person. Luffy. Read 30 plus chapters ahead on my patreon.com slash the light edge host. Chapter 104. Ace. 3. Usopp understood that by ninja he meant that he was taken for a tour in Ken's Devil Fruit, and thus gained the character of a ninja. How many ninjas are there exactly, and how come he didn't get one? Though he loved the fact that his own character was really powerful, he envied Luffy and Ken sometimes. And now, there was another one with the character of a ninja. Usopp had made up his mind that he would try to complete his character as fast as possible so he might get the chance to get ninja from the devil fruit of Ken. He is just a nobody with some Logia devil fruit powers. Why should I care? Ace argued. You have met Shanks, haven't you? Ken asked. Shanks? You met Shanks? Really? How is he? Is he good? Where is he? Luffy got excited at the mention of Shanks. Yes, I wanted to meet him because he had saved your life, so I wanted to pay regards. What of it? Really, Ace, you are such a good person. Luffy had sparkles in his eyes, while Ace felt a little embarrassed for showing his caring side to Luffy. He always used to call Luffy by crybaby, and thus he felt if he showed Luffy his vulnerable side, Luffy might lose respect. But then again, Luffy never cared for his feelings and was just happy to see one of his brothers take care of him. Do you remember those scars on his right eye? Those scars which seemed like a claw mark? Ken asked. Ace stiffened at this question. He didn't spend much time with Shanks that time because he was an upcoming supernova at that time, and many people in the crew felt uncomfortable having him around Shanks. Though Shanks and his immediate crew were very close to him, others who worked for Shanks didn't feel the same way. But he did remember that claw marks on his eye. That claw mark? Huh. At that time, he remembered the signature weapon of Teach. Teach always carried a metal claw that he put on his knuckles to fight. If what Ken was pointing out was true, then Teach had once clashed with Shanks and had managed to wound Shanks. You are saying Teach had once clashed against Yonko? Vess. But how is that possible? He is a nobody, while Shanks is a Yonko. T don't know. But I just know that they had clashed. A person who could injure a Yonko should always be respected, while here you dive headfirst into something that you don't have the picture of. How do you know this? Nobody spoke of this to me. Does it matter? Ace was silent as he didn't know what he should say here. It was his fault that he didn't gather more information about his own crewmate. Teach had been living with them for such a long time, 
and now it seemed that there were many aspects that he didn't have any idea about. But I am not going to stop just because he clashed with a Yonko. I will bring him to my father. Luffy for the first time heard about the scars of Shanks. He had seen them before, but never asked him, thinking it was some kind of confrontation he had in the sea. Now it seemed like there was a story behind it. Ken just sighed, seeing that. He already knew that his words would just fall in deaf ears. Ken had been living with him for quite a long time, and even after years of telling him to change his hot-blooded ways, this stupid guy didn't. Now it was too late. He was an adult, and there was no way he was going to listen to Ken. T knew you would say this. Idiot brother of mine. Who are you calling an idiot, Tam? You are an idiot. No, you are. No, you. Seeing the banter, both Usopp and Luffy laughed, and later Luffy joined in the argument saying both of them are idiots. No wonder they are brothers. Usopp thought, seeing the brothers lose some brain cells while being together. Ace, do you want to go for another character? Ken asked after some time. Since he couldn't stop Ace, it was better to give him some help while he can. Ace had already finished the character of Neji long back in the sea, and he needed a second boost. Another one? Am I allowed? Of course. Didn't you see I've already become a ninja? Who did you become? Obito. Hearing the answer, Ace got silent. Obito was the reason he had died in the war, and now his brother has taken the character of his murderer? What a twist. With the ten tails? Of course no. It's a devil fruit not a god. So can I go for another character? Of course. Oi, Ken, when will you be sharing the powers with the other crew members? Hope soon enough after we see who has genuinely joined the group officially. They haven't joined as of yet. By the way, do you want to come with us? Ken asked. Do you even need to ask? Luffy and Usopp system simulate a character for Ace. With that monologue in his mind, all the four people vanished in their places and were thrown into a different dimension. Simulating character for Portgast D. Ace. Simulating. Choosing character. Ace had already disappeared from their place while Luffy, Usopp, and Ken were looking at the character, which Ace had taken over as a new character. Ken's eyes got wide open when he saw the character that Ace was given. Ace was born in a normal family with both father, mother, and even an elder brother. The family was happy, and his brother really loved him to death. But everything when the Fire Nation... I mean, everything changed when a dragon attacked their village, and in this attack, Ace's family, including Ace himself, died. Read 18 chapters ahead on my patreon.com slash thelightedjost. Chapter 105, One Wasn't Enough. What those stupid dragons killed Ace, I am going to kill them. Who are these dragon bastards? Come and I will face them alone. Great Captain Usopp will kill them all. Both Usopp and Luffy were agitated seeing Ace die. They were looking forward for a great adventure for Ace, and they were sure that these dragons were never shown before when they had visited their own worlds. Bro, Hermione's world had dragons, but it was very rare in her world, and they were in heavy control. Calm down. The story hasn't ended. Ken said as he already could recognize what the story was about. And it was true. The story didn't end there. Luffy and Usopp were sad because the death of Ace meant that he wouldn't get any new cool powers, but it was nothing like that. The brother of Ace was obsessed with bringing his brother back to life, and he did everything possible to do so. And at the end, his elder brother was successful. The boy came back to life, but now he was different. He had less emotions and almost became like a robot. Seeing no way out, his elder brother did a very different thing. He took his brother and left it under the care of a dragon, and the name of the dragon was Igneal. Yup, that small child was none other than Natsu Dragneal, one of the Dragon Slayer. The story went on just like the original story. Natsu was taught all of the fire dragon magic and was raised to be a dragon slayer, and he wasn't the only one. He became friends with Wendy, Sting, etc. But life wasn't as pleasant. Akanologia, another dragon slayer, had been killing dragons all over the continents, and in order to defeat him, Natsu was thrown to the future, where Igneal and the Oter dragons hoped that their children would be able to defeat Acnologia. This was a long story, but there was one thing very consistent of the story, the power of friendship. This meant that even in the most hopeless situations, Natsu would get a power-up and defeat his enemy. 
Usopp and Luffy were so happy seeing this that they even shed a bit of tears. What are you crying for? Ken was annoyed by this. Baka, this is tears of happiness. It means we can defeat our enemies too if we have a purpose. Power of friendship isn't going to save you when Kizaru arrives. Ken had this thought but didn't speak it out loud. The story of Natsu went on and finally it was revealed that he himself was the end and the curse of Zeref. Later everybody's mind was blown when it was revealed that dragon slayer magic could actually make someone a dragon by the process of dragonification. Of course, later Igneel, who was sealed inside the body of Natsu, came forward and said that it will never happen as he had stopped the process when he was sealed inside. This is was great story from the point of view of Luffy and Usopp as this story portrayed so much adventure as these two often craved for and they got to see such huge powers of Natsu, Zeref, and even Acnologia, who was menace for hundreds of years. Later, with much help from other dragon slayers, he was able to defeat Acnologia, and everyone cheered when they saw that. With that Ace was done with the character and was brought back to the real world. Second character of Porcus D. Ace, 60% complete. All the negative effects of dragonification and illness to travel in carriages or ships had been removed. When Ken heard the notification of the system, he was jealous. The two min problems of Dargon Slayers were their notion sickness and losing themselves when they were fully dragonified. But apparently the system had removed it, which meant that he could easily become a dragon like Acnologia and keep the sanity. This was a huge cheat for Ace. Welcome back, Ace. Ace looked different when he was back to the real world. Under his eyes there were already signs of dragonification, and even his hands had signs of scales on that. Though Ace wasn't emitting any fire, his body felt extremely hot. Magic was really powerful. Thank you, Ken. You don't have to care about the problem of dragonification and the bad affects of the curse. You can change yourself into a dragon when you complete the character or meet certain percentage. And if you really want to thank me, then go back to the place you came from. You know I can't do that. Ken was ready to reprimand Ace with more insults when he heard a sound from the system. Monkey D. Luffy had completed his character. Ken stiffened when he heard that. He didn't expect that another brother, too, had completed the character, and that, too, on the same time when Ace got a new character. Luffy, did you finish your character? Hi. All these excitement made me feel that now I have full control of Hiruzen's power. She 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 she. What you completed too. When will be my time? Don't worry Usopp. I completed it after years. I am sure you will faster than me. Though Usopp could understand what Luffy meant, but he still felt a bit down. Seems like my brother has grown up. Ha ha ha. Ace was happy seeing his brother complete the character at the same time as him. This was a great news. Luffy, do you want to go for your own adventure? Of course. System give the second character to Luffy. Simulating a new character for subject to Monkey D. Simulating, character chosen. They were back at the system space and Luffy vanished from his spot. He was really happy to see himself again going for an adventure. It had been a long time since he had last gone for himself, and now it was that time again. The story opened with a young child in the rain crying. The child had overgrown spiky hair, wore a white shirt and a half pants. The child also had a dark green sleeping eye mask on his head. He looked really sad in the rain until an old man came and said, Don't be sad. In times like these, you gotta stand tall and smile big. You will be able to go to school soon. Read 30 plus chapters ahead on my patreon.com slash slash the lightage host. Chapter 106. Back to going merry. Fuck. Ken spat out when seeing the small kid. That was all he could come up with when he saw the kid. He knew who this character was and knew how outrageous he was. What? What happened? Is the child no good? I feel like he doesn't have any powers and a crybaby like Luffy. Ace said as he felt apprehensive as he felt it might be a waste for Luffy. No, he will do fine. Actually, he will do more than fine. Really? Usopp and Ace were curious about this new character and just waited to see how it would turn out in the end. At that moment, Ken felt envious of Luffy. The character which Luffy got this time was probably the most OP character one could get. More OP than Sanji. Sanji at the end was able to change the world and had near godly powers, but Luffy got the character of a god, a literal god. 
No scratch that, this character was the king of gods. He wondered if he could ever get such kind of character later. But Ken also knew that it had its drawbacks. He was pretty sure that Luffy might not ever be able to complete the character. The story went on where that small boy grew up and was busy with his life. But they could vaguely understand that this guy was taught by his grandfather and knew various kind of martial arts. It could not be denied that even Ace, who had been fighting for a long time, was impressed by the moves. He is still weak, Ace commented. Usopp too nodded his head. At this point, even Usopp could tell that he could beat the shit out of this guy at this moment with body strength alone. But this was where both were wrong. Soon a tournament started when he grew up. The tournament that went by the name God of High School, and this was where everything changed. This was where they came to know that this guy was something else. This was where he started getting flashbacks of his past, and he got a small hold of his old powers, and this was where it blew the minds of others. Who the fuck is he? Usopp couldn't help but ask, as they got a glance of his old memories. Jin Mori, you can say he is the reincarnation of Sun Wukong, a god. A god who went to war against the heavens itself. Heavens? You mean like heaven, heaven? Usopp had his eyes open wide. Yup. Fuck. Both Usopp and Ace spat out just like Ken before. This was really outrageous. As the story went on, the more ridiculous it became as more of his powers showed up. Of course, in the middle he was betrayed, but at the end the prophecy of Gaia came to fruition and he became the all-powerful god. With that the simulation ended and Luffy was thrown out. He looked a little exhausted after coming out, but there were already changes in his physical body. His rubbery body had more muscles, more defined muscles in his hands, abs on his abdomen, his thighs and legs looked like they had been inserted quite a bit of muscles with high density. And the greatest change Luffy had was his eyes. His pupils now had a cross sign in the middle of it. It was said that those eyes could discern lies, could see through both organic and inorganic materials. Simulation complete. Subject Monkey D. Luffy character completion of Jin Mori, Sen, 10%. The first notification came and that was expected. Higher the power, lower will be the completion rate. Only Usopp seemed to be growing fast against all odds. Otherwise, even Sanji was slow as only progressing 2%. Luffy, Luffy, are you all right? Ace went and held his brother. He was little scared thinking the transformation might have done damage to his body. Ken used his Sharingan to see if there was any kind of damage. Though he couldn't see things like Ace could with his Byakugan, he could at least see through the overall problem of Luffy. He could tell that Luffy was fine and just needed rest. And finally, they were back again at the real world. He is fine. He is just exhausted. Ken said as Ace took him on his shoulder. Luffy had already gone to sleep. We will need loads of meat after he wakes up, Ken reminded. There is still me at left after the last hunt in the ship. Usopp said, The crew is going to be pissed when they will know that we have traveled without their involvement. There was no other way. Vivian Robin are new and they haven't joined the crew. If they join, then we can lead them in. We need to go back to the boat. Ken nodded as he brought out his Stormbreaker. Without waiting for Ace to talk, who was confused, he opened the Bifrost and vanished from high spot. The next moment they appeared near the Going Merry ship. The ship was anchored quite far from the port, so the Navy hadn't been able to find the ship. Plus, Banchi, the turtle, was looking out for the ship as Ken asked it to do so after he used his Sharingan powers on him using Genjustu. What the fuck was that? Ace was scared for a second. He didn't expect to just be sucked into a weird rainbow bridge before ending in a totally different place. T can teleport people now with the Stormbreaker. Huh, you are lucky that I don't know the location of Sphinx Island or Moby Dick's location, or else I would have taken you forcefully. Can you stop with that? Ah, Usopp. Ken, you guys are here? Eh! Who is he? What happened to Luffy? Came a voice from the deck of the ship. It was Zoro who had returned. Chopper to poked his head from the deck. This is Ace, my brother. Your brother, Ace? Isn't he White Eye Ace? Read 30 plus chapters ahead on my Patreon.com, The Light Edgeost. Chapter 107, To Rain Base. Yes, Ace, this is Zoro and Chopper. That is Robin. Everyone greeted each other. 
Chopper being the doctor of the ship, checked Luffy and said that he was fine and just needed some rest and food. Meanwhile, Sanji and others came running by. Oye, hoist the sails we are leaving. Nami shouted from afar. From far, others could see that a bunch of marines were running after them. Everyone didn't waste a second and took out the anchor and hoisted the sails. Ace had made a run to get his small ship and promised to meet up on the sea. What happened to Luffy? Sanji was confused, just like others, but Usopp and Ken were silent about it. They couldn't explain what had happened. The marines came after them, but they weren't able to catch them, as the going merry proved to be too fast for them. Ace finally met up in the sea and tied his boat to their ship. Tam Ace, nice to meet you. He is so polite, more polite than Ken. Yeah, he knows all the manners. How were these brothers even brought up? The sea is such an amazing place. This was another embarrassment for Ken as he had his hand on his forehead. Of course, they weren't able to escape from Nanohana so easily as they had many ships barricading their way to the next destination. Ace, we have friends. Hmm, they must be hungry for some snacks. Who is going to take care of them? Nami asked as she wasn't as scared as before. She didn't want any problem in Nanohana because this was in Alabasta and they didn't want a bad name for themselves and later, Viv Vivi's father might be accused of being someone who colluded with pirates, so they had been extra careful. But here it was the open sea, and these were just bounty hunters. T. Will, I want to try some new moves, Ace said as he jumped from the ship to his boat. Let's see how capable the second commander of the famous Whitebeard Pirates is. Zoro commented as he knew of Ace since he had been a bounty hunter once, and Ace didn't disappoint. Ace took the small boat which was powered by his own loggia and sailed in extreme fast speed to the barricade. Everyone, get ready. This is White-Eyed Ace. We will get a great price if we catch him. He is just a single guy. What can he do? Ha ha ha. What second division commander? More like a second-rate pirate. Ha! Those chants were ringing among the bounty hunters and Ken could easily hear them. He had been trying to get himself a new power the power that Enel had. Enel knew observation hockey to a great degree, but he could use it in the most efficient way possible. Due to his logia, he could use his observation hockey to hear the statics created by electricity. So using that, he could hear people from kilometers away without even trying. This was a whole new level of using observation hockey, and now Ken had finally got a hold of the exclusive power. His observation hockey not only gave him the power to understand the moves of his opponents, but also allowed him to listen to people from far away. Ken smiled as he had taken another leap. Years of training were coming to fruition. Meanwhile, Ace had sailed very close to his enemies. The Baroque Works bounty hunters seemed ready with their weapons and cannons. Ace took both his hands near his mouth and made it like he was going to use his hands as a pipe. What is he doing? Is he performing the same move like you and Luffy do? Blow fire? Is he a ninja, Ken? Yes. His eyes are white because he is a ninja too. Those eyes allow him to look into the chakra points or the blood flow of a person and they have special attacks that could affect those points. But I don't think this is a ninjutsu. Then what is it? Carrot no H6K6, Fire Dragon's Breath. A large circular magical circle in front of the mouth of Ace as he blew into it after taking a huge breath. His mouth then proceeded to spit fire. Many here had seen Luffy and even Ken using the same technique, but this was different. This single attack from Ace, which was just fire, assaulted the first ship and blew, but it didn't stop there. The Phi re-attack continued, and the barricades that were built in line were all blown away with the same fire. The fire seemed alive as it devastated anything that came in its way. Usopp, who had already seen Natsu's power when they were inside, couldn't help but nod his head. But the others had their jaws dropped. Sanji clenched his fist. He could also control fire, and even use it with his legs, but it was still difficult for him to do so much long-distance damage. Until he could get access to hysterical strength, it would be tough. Zoro too could destroy them, but it was no possible with one single attack. Seeing this, both of them again had a reality check and understood that they need to progress more on their characters. After getting rid of the bounty hunters, Ace was back at the ship. Ace is so awesome. Can you join us? Yes. Yes. Ace, please join us. 
Chopper and Nami had already become fans of Ace after seeing this. Especially Nami, she was a witch, and she could easily tell that this was magic. Nami could already guess that Ace had been given access to another character by Ken, but she didn't call it out. But she was definitely interested in magic as she asked Ace about the magic that he used. Of course, Ace was happy to help Nami, and with cheers, the ship sailed. Luffy was still sleeping soundly and his snores were loud for everyone to hear. Chopper came forward and asked, What happened to Luffy? Something happened. You will soon know, Chopper. Your time will come soon. Read 30 plus chapters ahead on my Patreon.com's The Lighted Coast. Chapter 108, Hockey. Are you hiding something from me? Chopper asked in a very meek tone. After joining the crew and seeing the power levels of his crewmates, he felt a little left out and was suffering from a low self-esteem at the moment. And he could also feel that there was something that the captain and his crew were hiding, but he was too shy to ask them. Chopper was feeling a little left out in all of this. Sorry, Chopper, there is something, but there are guests here on the ship as you have seen, and one even was our enemy before. We can't trust them with secrets as of yet. As soon as the crew is safe from outsiders, I promise you that I will tell you the strongly guarded secret of the Straw Hat Pirates. Chopper eyes shone as he heard that. All this time he was thinking it might be because he wasn't strong enough that this so-called secret wasn't being told to him. But now he realized that the reason was because of the guests. No, 1am sorry for doubting you. I understand. Chopper again had a smile on his face. Ken smiled and just petted his head. No matter what, Chopper was a cute reindeer, and he couldn't help but have a liking for such cute animals. The ship had started sailing again at full speed in order to anchor near Aramalu, and from there they would go towards Rainbase to take down Crocodile. After taking down, he would be brought to trial and hopefully this would stop the rebellion caused by Koza. At least that was the plan. After hours of sailing, Luffy, who had fallen asleep, finally woke up. Ken already knew that this guy would be hungry after eating, so he had flown away to bring in more meat. And as expected, when Luffy woke up, the first thing he shouted was, Me! Sanji was already alerted for this, and he had started cooking from long ago, so there was already a pile waiting for him when Luffy woke up. It was there when the crewmates saw the most significant change of Luffy. His eyes had changed. Though his eyes didn't execute any power, the sight alone was able to captivate everyone present. Luffy-san, where did you get those eyes? Vivi couldn't help but ask. Like Vivi, Robin too was curious about what happened to their captain. Huh? Eyes? Did something happen? Luffy was confused as he had not seen himself in the mirror. Chopper ran and brought back a mirror for him to see himself. When Luffy saw himself, he was a little taken aback, but he could realize why this was the case. The new character had changed his eyes, and in fact, even though he wasn't able to tap into the actual powers of the eyes, he could now feel that with his eyes he could see through many things. The ship, the people around, the sea, the wind. He could see through each of them, and even could vaguely feel the things around. Luffy had finally awakened his observation hockey. Ah, I don't know what happened. I got exhausted, and I just slept. Luffy spoke the half-truth and laughed out loud. His laughter seemed fake, and anyone hearing that laugh could tell that there was something Luffy was hiding, and so were Ace, Ken, and Usopp for Vivi and Robin. But they didn't mind. They could understand why it was like that. Meanwhile, Luffy was trying to understand his new powers. He could tell that he had changed after he got access to observation hockey. Luffy, did you get access to observation hockey? Ace came forward and asked. Hockey? You mean the same thing which Ken used to speak of? I feel like it can predict nature. Ken, who was listening to the conversation, threw a stone picked up from the garden at Luffy, which he easily avoided. Yes, he has awakened observation hockey, Ken said with a smile. Finally, the last brother was able to awaken this. What is observation hockey? Sanji asked. Hockey is the fundamental thing. If you want to stand at the top, you must have it and especially in the new world. Without it in the new world, you will die. There are three types of hockey. Observation hockey. This allows a user to predict an opponent's moves. This also allows a person to gauge the number of people in a certain area. The more proficient you are, 
the better you will be able to predict. Some people are so efficient in this that they can see the future. Example, Usopp's father can easily see the future since he is the sniper of the red-haired pirates. Ace said, Ken had already given a rundown of their crewmates. Huh? My father? My father is so awesome? Usopp was ecstatic hearing praise from Ken. Even with his current powers to the max wouldn't allow him to look into the future. If his father could do it, it meant he was in a league of his own. Shanks is a Yonko, along with the likes of Whitebeard, Kaido, and Big Mom. They are the rulers of the other half of the Grand Line, so of course they are powerful. Now Ken started explaining the next hockey. The next is armament hockey. With those words, Ken showed his hands which had turned black. This surprised everyone. Ken, you finally learnt this? Ace asked as he remembered his brother once complained about it when they were children. At that time he didn't understand, but later he did when he came to the new world. Yeah, this hockey allows the user to hurt Logia users. Yes, you heard it right. One can hurt a Logia or any kind of devil fruit user with this hockey. But this is just the start. With this hockey you can not only hurt your opponents, but with high proficiency you can destroy the enemies inside with this hockey alone. Read 35 chapters ahead on my patreon.com slash the lighted jost. Chapter 109. The secrets spilled. Luffy and others were amazed by this. They didn't expect that such a thing even existed. This was a whole new territory for this. So you mean to say that I can only defeat Smokey when I learn this armament hockey? Luffy always had a better IQ when it came to fights. All the brain capacity would turn on when there was a fight situations involved. Not only Smoker, but also Crocodile. He has Logia San San Fruit. You will need hockey to defeat him, but there is a weakness for him. He can stop his body to elementalize if you attack him with moisture. In other words, if you use punches while your hands are wet, you can beat the shit out of him. Really, this is great. Wait for me, Crocodile. I will beat the shit out of you. So Crocodile has such weakness. Didn't know that. Robin commented. T will just beat the shit out of Crocodile. This is totally a new information for me. Hockey, huh? Times are getting serious. Sanji lit up a cigarette. He thought with his character alone it would be enough, but the world wasn't as simple as he thought. T just need to stop Crocodile. All right, we know. Now stop. Zoro gave a smack at the head of Luffy with his hilt. About observation hockey, he had already known of this as his breathing technique had allowed to learn this quite early. There is another type of hockey. This hockey can't be trained and only the few chosen ones have that. Only the lucky ones are born with it. It is called conqueror's hockey. As the name implies, only a conqueror can have that hockey. Born with it? Eh? One can't learn it? So weird. There were discussions and murmurs among the crew. They thought hockey was fundamental, but now they came to know that some people are just born lucky. Some people are born lucky. Ace here has that, Ken said. What? Ace? You are one of the lucky ones? Ha! <sighs> Luffy didn't even think for a second that he might not have the Conqueror's hockey and was just happy that his brother had one. Ace seemed a little shy as he heard the praise of his brothers. Luffy, you too have it, Ken said as he needed these people to know about their own powers in the journey forward. Huh? Me? Luffy, you too have it. This is awesome. Wow, Luffy, you are so lucky. The crewmates and Ace believed Ken and already accepted that Luffy has Conqueror's hockey, as Ken had never been wrong. Everyone congratulated him. Luffy isn't the only one who has this. Zoro has it too. This statement stiffened everyone. They thought having this hockey was incredibly rare, but now two of their own crewmates had this. Even Ace was surprised. This hockey was incredibly rare, and this was even in his father's crew. T, how do you know that I have this Conqueror's hockey? A person without that hockey can never defeat Mihawk. You want to be the best in the world, right? What does this hockey do, by the way? Generally, a single move of this hockey would make the people who has lower willpower to faint, and that is the basic use of it. But if one needs to stand at the top, he needs to use this hockey just like armament hockey. Everyone gulped their throats when they heard the explanation. They didn't expect that someone would faint with just one use of this hockey and only because one didn't have willpower. Luffy and Zoro just smiled at this new knowledge. What about me? What about me? If this Marimo has this, I also must have it. 
Sanji was agitated when Zoro was named, but he wasn't. Tam sorry Sanji, I don't know about you. You are supposed to have one, but you reject your own bloodline in your own fear and get distracted by women too often. Bloodline? What is he talking about? What do you mean, Ken? Sanji stiffened when he heard that. He looked at Ken with wide eyes, as he didn't expect Ken to know of the bloodline secret. He had never spoken of this secret to anyone since he came to East Blue, but it seemed like Ken knew of it. You, you, you know of my father? Sanji was shaking as he asked that. His voice croaked, and he gritted his teeth in anger. Personally? No. But, I have heard of him. Luffy can be dumb enough to invite people, but someone needs to make sure that the person who enters the ship are legitimate enough. Oye, Ken, what are you talking about? Is there something wrong with Sanji? Luffy was confused, and so were the others. Then if you knew, why did you let me in? Sanji clenched his fists. He was ready to leave the crew if he was asked to. He knew his past, and he was ready to face the axe for it. Your birth doesn't define you. Your actions do. You refuse your own powers just because you hate your father and brothers, just like my brother Ace. Why am I being brought here? Ace shouted. Everyone turned their heads at Ace as they were curious what Ken meant. Ken had been unloading one bombs after another, and it was blowing the minds of the people. First hockey, second was the mysterious bloodline of Sanji, and now there was a third one related to Ace. You know who your actual father is, but you refuse to acknowledge that and go after his rival. Ace's father? Isn't Luffy's father also Ace's father? Nami asked. No, Ace's father was Roger, the Pirate King. Luffy spilled the secrets instantly. Ace got angry at this and started pulling the cheek of Luffy in anger, and in retaliation, Luffy too pulled Ace's cheek, which soon turned into a brawl. While the brawl continued, everyone in the crew were sweating. Ace was the son of Goldie Roger. What the hell was up with these brothers? Read 30 plus more chapters ahead on my Patreon.com's The Light Edgeost. Chapter 110, Kung Fu Dugongs. T don't acknowledge him as my father. My father is Whitebeard. He is the only one. Ace declared as he felt irritated. He never wanted that label, but somehow it stuck with him. Of course, nobody hated him for this. They were pirates to begin with, and the father of Ace had conquered everything. Everyone had starry eyes when they looked at Ace, especially Usopp and Chopper. They wanted to be pirates from the start, and now Ace was the son of the great pirate king. This was a privilege in the eyes of the two. This crew has too many high-profile people, Robin murmured. Yeah, a bunch of monsters, Vivi said, and for the first time they were in agreement with each other. What about the bloodline of Sanji? I still didn't understand. Usopp was still curious about Sanji as there seemed to be a secret. Sanji hung his head in shame. He felt like everyone was judging him with his eyes as he felt guilty. Luffy could see it and said, It doesn't matter where Sanji comes from and what he did in the past. I don't care. Sanji shuddered at those words. He looked at Luffy and almost had tears in his eyes. He couldn't believe what Luffy said. His captain didn't even care about his past and just accepted him. What are you brooding about? I accepted you after knowing, and even your mentor Zeph knew about it. He still accepted you. Stop living in the past and accept what you were born with. What? Owner Zeph knew? He had a vague idea about it, and he still didn't care. Same goes for us. Everyone here has passed, so it doesn't matter. But Sanji, if you really want to achieve great heights, don't reject yourself. Sanji just nodded his head, but Ken knew that Sanji wasn't ready. Nobody asked Sanji anything more about his past, since Luffy declared that he didn't care, and they respected the captain. Even Ken, who was the master of spilling secrets, shut his mouth. There were some things that only Luffy had powers over, and everyone was fine with it. The ship continued sailing, but there was a subtle change among the crew members. Luffy and Zoro were both discussing the hockey with Ace, while Sanji just buried himself in cooking. He was a little depressed, and so he wanted to get rid of it with his work. Nami and Usopp got serious about completing their characters, especially Nami, who was very close to completion. She had already started practicing more vigorously as she tried remembering all the spells and knowledge she knew. She was already using magic to draw the charts of the ocean, and thus she didn't spend much time on drawing and was rather practicing magic when she could. After a sail for two days, 
they had finally reached the shores of Aramalu, a small town built just near the divide of Alabasta. The ship anchored at a place near the abandoned harbor. But as Zoro lowered the anchor, his eyes met with a unique sea creature that came in a group, the Kung Fu Dugongs. What are these? The Kung Fu Dugongs. They are the local sea turtles who reside in this part of the sea. They are known for strong body and they go around challenging everyone. How are these called Dugongs when they are not even Dugongs? At best, they should be called Kung Fu Turtles, not Kung Fu Dugongs. Ha ha! Ken-san, I don't know about that. Vivi seemed a little embarrassed. It was true, these sea creatures didn't look like Dugongs at all. Of course, when Ken was talking with Vivi, someone went forward and challenged the Dugongs, and that idiot would be Luffy. He won with no cap. And then, these small sea animals were ready to follow Luffy. Luffy? We are not going to take them. Nami shouted. But then the dugongs showed the iconic Puss in the Boots cat's eyes to Nami and Vivi. This made the two women guilty, and they didn't know how to reject. Chopper was the one who came forward and solved the problem after offering them food. It was good that everyone in the crew, the magical bag or else Luffy would have been subjected to an earful. Ace joined them because he wanted to know the location of Blackbeard, and Ken didn't both a R to tell him his location. They were going to meet Blackbeard anyway in that awful town, so they were going to meet Teach long before Ace would. Ken already had a plan in his mind to deal with that scum. The group moved swiftly through the abandoned town, and they saw the horrors that this place had gone through. There was no vegetation, and they even came across a dried-up skeleton. The more they saw, the more the crew got incensed. Vivi was shaking as tears rolled through her eyes. Luffy and others too got angry as they vowed to take very good care of Crocodile. Ken just looked at their reactions and thought, This is nothing. What Crocodile did is nothing as compared to the atrocities done by the world nobles Kaido Doflamingo. Crocodile at least had a goal in mind and ethics. He even saved Ace once in the war. The others don't even have a conscience. Of course, Ken wasn't stupid enough to spill everything. The crew needed to learn it by themselves. The group soon was in an open desert and it became extremely hot, but there was relief in all of this. Banshi had come to help. Banshi was a creature that could move fast in the desert too, so Robin with the help of Nami attached a carriage behind Banshi, and thus instead of treading on hot and scorching sun, everyone was inside a luxurious carriage. Nami, you are so awesome. Chopper appreciated this the most as he was a winter animal and hot weather wasn't for him. Nimi looked proud as she had made the carriage out of magic and even installed a fan inside to help with the heat outside. Read 35 more chapters on my patreon.com slash thelightedgehost.